unbelievable puzzle. This is really, really, really good stuff. Greetings, friend. Timberlake here from Smart Hobbies. Today, I'm going to show you how to solve Tatooine Sunset, the classic Sudoku by Philip Newman. I first saw this puzzle on Cracked and Cryptic, like lots of you. I, I like to watch that uh, video channel. It's great. Mark and Simon are awesome. And when I first saw it, for, I was just amazed by how it looks, first of all. I can see how it's got kind of the Tucson thing going on. But I also knew with all those empty spaces, this is a very hard, very difficult puzzle to solve. Uh, Mark and Simon, they had Fitz doing it. Um, they got through it. But I wanted to look at it and go, okay, is there a logical way to solve this? Uh, you're not going to you know, bifurcate and guess and work our way around it, but is there an actual logical way to do this? And the answer is yes, you can do this logically. And I will show you how. I'm going to show you a little bit different method too. I've seen some other um, people attempt this and they've shown how they've solved it. But hopefully the way I'll show you today is going to be really insightful for you and help you understand the key solving strategy we need for this, which is swordfishes. All right. And with that, it's, it's, it's solving, it's solving time. Time. So what I'm going to do differently, and like they pointed out in other videos, is... To solve this puzzle, if you try to uh, cross-hatch and do Snyder rotation, it doesn't work at the beginning. It's just not. You have to do a canon elimination in order to do this. So this is like an advanced puzzle, in advanced strategies. So what I'm going to do is I show all the canons, and I'll show you how to eliminate these canons one by one. And again, each step of the way, it's like going through an escape room. It's like going through uh, you know, a, a difficult logic puzzle where you got to figure out one step before you can move on. And it doesn't let up. Philip, you did a great job here. It does not let up. It it just stays tough and tough and tough until the very, very end when you can unlock and start really solving. So what I want to show you is there's very little you can do with this if you just try to do cross hatching. You got the seven nines, you got a seven nine coming across row seven here, and you got the seven and the nine coming down column three. So right here you can see the seven and the nines are a hidden pair. Now that's it. You can't solve anything else. You can't put in any other numbers. At this point in the game so what we have to do is we got to find some ways to limit the cannons and how we're going to do that it's swordfishes all right so if you go here to the ones you probably notice looking at this puzzle there are no ones there's no given ones so we're not going to be able to eliminate ones right away but really the key is to keep eliminating ones and all these cells until we get to a point where we can actually start solving for the ones so let's go to the twos what you'll notice here in the twos is there is a swordfish here and not just one, you can actually look at two different ways. And I'll point out both ways. So if you go right here, what is a swordfish? A swordfish means it's a three by three pattern where there's at most three uh, of a particular can, in this case two, the most three twos can be in those three spots. So that means the three, the twos have to be in one of those three spots. It's kind of like an X-wing, but you add an extra row and column. Uh, so if we look across, the easiest way to find a swordfish is kind of look across the rows first. And if you come here, you'll notice and I'll highlight in rows four, three, rows four, and row eight. The two can be at most three different spots, right? It's in the same three columns in those rows. Uh, we also notice that there's no two right here, and that's okay. Uh, the way that a swordfish is a little different than an X-wing is that you don't have to have a two in, in all the column, in all the little spots. You just have to have a two or three. If you have one, obviously, a hidden single you can solve it but if you have two or three then this is a swordfish type pattern now if you're really astute uh, you may also notice that you can look at the swordfish by going through the columns instead and I'll show you that right now so if you look down and did column two and column five and column eight that's also a swordfish and what is so cool about this is that no matter which swordfish you find, the eliminations are going to be exactly the same. You're going to eliminate the exact same cannon. So I'll just start from this one, and I'll show you which cannons we can eliminate here. All right. So you can pretty much, if you're using the columns, then every other two in those rows can be eliminated. So all these twos, these extra twos in rows one, two, and six are gone. And what you'll notice is what's left is that actual swordfish that I pointed out the first time. That's okay. It works really well. Now, it's not. this doesn't happen every time. You can't do it both ways. But in this puzzle, uh, you'll see this come up again and again. All right. If I looked at the threes, I won't be able to find any X-Wing, swordfish, or uh, uh, 
any other way to, to eliminate the threes at this time. And the fours are the same way, but we'll get back to those. Now let's go to the fives. In the fives, we actually have another swordfish pattern. Uh, and what the columns I want you to concentrate on here, or, or the rows actually, let's go with row two, row five, and row seven. Now what you'll notice is this is still a swordfish, even though there's only two in row two, and two in row five, and two in row seven, there's at most three in each of those. And there's only three different spots that you can have a five in each of these spots. So either, you know, the five can be at most here or here, here, or here, here, or here. And you're like, hey, I don't believe you, Timberlake. This doesn't work for me. You can't necessarily, you know, solve that way. Well, try it. Put a five in one of these spots. And then you'll see how the solving pattern works. The five has to be in one of those and has to be in one of those. It, it doesn't go any other way. You can't have more than one five. It works. So we are going to eliminate our fives from the extra rows here. So that five can go, that five can go, that five can go, that five can go. Clean up. And you'll notice too, if you started in column three, four, and nine, you'd also add a swordfish. Same way. I won't keep pointing out both of them, but if you do see the columns come to you before the rows, that's cool. Not a problem. All right, let's go to the sixes. Guess what? We got another swordfish here. Let's cut across here, and I'll move on a little bit faster, but I want you to be able to spot and see these as I'm pulling them up, and hopefully you'll start pointing out and seeing the patterns. Here's a swordfish, and here's what we can eliminate. Those three, yep. And those three. All right, we got rid of the sixes. And now we're eliminating cannons, limiting cannons. You notice there's no uh, naked singles yet. We haven't solved one cell yet. And we're not going to for a little while. That's okay. All right, the sevens, you're going to see a similar pattern as what we saw with the fives. And rows three, rows four, and row eight. Three, four, and eight. All right, do you see the swordfish? There it is. And now we can do our eliminations here. Get rid of all these extra sevens. All right, and you think we're done with swordfishes? No. Eights, you can look. You're not gonna find a swordfish there yet. We'll get back to that. And then the nines, we do have another swordfish. Oops, didn't mean to do that. That's me clicking the wrong spot. All right. Rows three, four, and eight. Hopefully you see the four fish and no more than three spots in all those. We can eliminate these extra nines here, 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 and then here. Okay, all those nines are gone. All right, we've cleaned up some of this puzzle but we're not done yet and we haven't solved one cell it's okay you'll get there you got to have patience you want to get through this puzzle all right now what i want to show you is we're going to have some hidden pairs so a hidden pair means that there's at most two uh candidates in the same two spots in a block a row or a column and the nice thing about using filtering which is the way i use to solve this puzzle is that you're going to see that if you change between these candidates and the colors don't move, that means it's the same spots. You'll notice here in nines, almost every block, there's only at most two nines in there. Okay, let's go to the sevens. All right, did you see, did you notice anything peculiar about that when I go from nine to seven? Hopefully you notice that this cell, this cell, this cell, and this cell didn't move. They didn't move. Why is that? Because that means a seven and a nine can only be in those two spots in those blocks. Also, they didn't move down here in block seven, but we already solved that. So what that means is this is a hidden pair of seven and nines here in block two. It's a hidden pair of seven and nines in block six. We can eliminate all the other candidates in those cells. And we're down to seven and nine. Cool, huh? All right, now if we do the nines and the twos. Okay, look, and actually just, I'll give you it. Just look here in block four, nine and two. No change, right? Nine and two, no change. That means we also have a hidden pair of two nines. So we can eliminate a pair. So we have a two nine. Awesome. Great. Now you have to shift your thinking. We can't do any swordfishes right now. We got to stop. 
But now we got to look at these pairs and these triples. Now, the notation like Mark and Simon were doing, they started to pick up on this because you kind of go backwards. You start adding notation. So they started seeing those triples. With this way, we've been eliminating, eliminating, eliminating. So it take, it's a little hard to see hidden triples, but they're here. And this is the next step we want to move forward. So we want to look across row one. Row one, when I focus on, you see, okay, seven, nine. What spots can a two, seven, and nine be in row one? What spots? Well, I'll tell you, it's limited to three spots that you can have a two, a seven, or a nine. Here, here, and here. I'll highlight those. You notice that two, seven, nine can't be in any other spots. So that means the two, seven, nines are locked into those three spots in row one. Great. So we can eliminate everything else that's not a two, a seven, or a nine. And what's the key here, too? is that that is a considered, a, well now it's a naked triple because I've eliminated the cannons, but it was a hidden triple before, two, seven, and nine. We need this to kind of keep winnowing down our candidates. All right, can we see this in anywhere else? Well, let's take you to row six, row six. Where can you put a two, seven, and a nine? Looks like right here, right here, and right here. So columns two, five, and eight, same columns actually. You'll notice you can't put a 279 in any other spot in row 6. So we can eliminate 279 because those are the three spots you're going to have a 2, a 7, or a 9. Great. All right. Did the rows. How about the columns? And this is the one I noticed that helped me crack this. Uh, let's look here. Column 1. Same thing. 279. Where can it be? Here, here, and here. The only eliminations we need to make are right then that top, top spot. So we can get rid of the one and the four. And let's look also at column six. So let's come over here to column six, two, seven, and nine. I can see it here in row three. I can see it in row four. And down here in row eight. No more two sevens or nine. So that's another hidden triple. So what we can do is eliminate everything that's not a two, a seven, or a nine. Great. Okay, we just did a bunch of hidden triples. And what you may notice here is now what we've created was a couple of naked pairs. All right, a naked pair is when there's at most two candidates in any two spots. So we know that, that those two candidates are limited to those two spots. So here in block five, I'll highlight it for you, two to seven. So two seven have to be right here. Well, so anywhere else in block five can't have a two or a seven. Well, this, I mean, that two's gone. Great. You see any other two sevens? How about up here in block one? All right. So we got two seven. We got two seven. I'll highlight those. So there can't be any other twos or sevens. Well, this so that means that two can't be a two there. It has to be in one of those two spots. Great. So now we've done hidden triples. Now naked pairs. This is crazy. And yet we still haven't solved anything yet. But now we can go back to our swordfishes. We've made a lot of eliminations here. So you remember we did swordfishes with twos, fives, six, sevens, and nines. Well, let's go back to the eights. Can we make, now can we make a swordfish with the eights? Do you see it? Okay. The answer is yes. So right here in row one, row four, row eight. At most eights in three spots in the same three columns, that is a swordfish. So now we can make some eliminations here. So that's can't be an eight, that can't be an eight, that can't be an eight, that can't be an eight. And this is critical to get rid of some of these eights at the bottom. And you'll see why in just a minute. To eliminate the eights, looking good. Oh, we even have some more eights I can get rid of. Right here and right here. Okay. Great. Now, let's move on. Swordfish, boom. Now we look here at the bottom. Uh, let's go across row nine. Seven, nine, one, five, one, four, and you'll notice here one, four, five. So you, what you see is we actually have now a naked triple. So one, four, and five, only three, at most three candidates in those three spots. So that's called a naked triple. You can also look at the seven, eight, and nine and notice that that's a hidden triple, a little harder to spot. But what we see by this, by having this naked triples, means we can get rid of the one, four, or five from every other spot in row nine. So that means that can't be a one, that can't be a one or a four. How does that help us? Well, we eliminate some more ones. 
Now, what you'll notice is now the ones are starting to get limited to certain spots. Can we use that to our advantage? And the answer is yes. We now can look at our ones and we'll find a way to make some more eliminations. We have a swordfish right here. A swordfish of ones. Can you believe that? Without one, any one being on here, we now can do a swordfish. This is amazing. All right, it's here in column two. It's here in column five. And it's here in column eight. And look, it's a three by three swordfish, but it's still a swordfish. Works great. Let's make some eliminations here, right? This can't be a one. We'll come across, get rid of all these ones, these extra ones, in rows two, rows five, and row seven. No ones, no ones. Great. But we're not done here. There's actually another advanced technique we can do right now with the ones, and it's called a jellyfish. So an X-wing, which is really a type of fish, is a two by two, where we have most two cannons and the same two columns and rows. Swordfish, you saw, is a three by three, at most three cannons, those same three columns and rows. Well, a jellyfish is a four by four, and we have one right here. I'm going to show it to you. Let's look at rows three. Let's look at rows four. Let's look at row eight. And let's look at row nine. And I'll use a different color. All right, four by four, at most four candidates in the same four columns in these rows. That's a jellyfish. I've never had to use that to solve a puzzle before, but here I am, and it's awesome. I'm excited. This is good stuff. So what can we eliminate? Same idea. We can eliminate these extra ones in the columns. And you're going to get excited because we're, we're about to get someplace where we haven't been in this puzzle yet. Cool. Now, guess what? We can actually solve a cell. We've done all that work, and now we can solve a cell. Here it is, right here, a four. Move across, and you look at uh, that four. We can actually make another four. There's a hidden single four right here. We can solve it. And you're like, oh, great, we can start solving now. No, that's, that's, there's not that much we can actually solve right here. We can solve this one, and we can, now we can solve this eight, but then you're going to get stuck again. That's okay. But let's look at these fours. We eliminate some fours. Let's go back to the fours. We haven't done any swordfish with them, but we actually have an X-Wing now. And I'll show you. Maybe you see it. If you go across rows two and row seven, you know, at most two spots. So it has to be a four here and here, or it has to be here and here. Four can't be up here. You see, that's our X-Wing. So there's, this cannot be a four right here. So we can eliminate that four. That has to be a three. All right, and so with that three, we can make an eight, and we made some eliminations there. I'll get rid of these fours, highlighted, and we can solve for a one, we can solve for a six. We can solve for one, an eight, a five, and a six, and a one. Great, so now we've made some abilities to solve here. And what you notice is we actually have cracked the puzzle. After all that hard work, it's all naked singles to the end. Unbelievable puzzle. This is really, really, really good stuff. Thank you so much for making this puzzle. If you watch us, hopefully you learned something about how to do swordfishes, jellyfish, hidden triples, naked triples, hidden pairs, naked pairs, hidden singles, naked singles. We covered X-Wings. We covered all that today. What would you think? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much, Philip, for your permission to use this puzzle. I hope to bring you more handmade Sudoku classics in the future. If you like this, please like, comment, subscribe. Also, check out these other videos from my channel. Thank you again so much for watching.